the beginning of the story of lipid and synuclein in Parkinson's disease, or lipids in general, really come from, uh, I believe, the discovery from genetic studies that uh, point toward risk factors for Parkinson in a number of uh, enzymes implicated in lipid metabolism. And I'm predicting that discovering that, like for example, heterozygote mutations in GBA1, uh, led people to believe that aside from other macromolecules that uh, are interesting to, uh, to be studied in Parkinson's disease, lipids may have to be looked at. And, and really from two angles, as you can imagine. Uh, the first one is to try to see if alterations in lipid metabolism may tell us anything about the biology of disease. And if not, uh, if alterations can be detected, maybe we can use it as biomarkers, which uh, as everyone knows, it's something that it's missing in Parkinson, but in reality, in every neurodegenerative disorders, whether it's Alzheimer or, or ALS, for example. And so that basically gave many people, including my lab, uh, the idea that we may have to look at what is happening with, with lipids. And from there, uh, a lot of studies uh, in, in New York, but also in other places, uh, started to investigate both in postmortem samples, so in brain tissues, in cell, uh, as well as in blood. Uh, because again, if you want to have a biomarker, you need to have access to maybe those alterations or signatures in an easy accessible uh, sample. And so that's basically what's happening for the past, I would say, five years. Of course, some of my colleagues who started even before would say that it's uh, even earlier than that. But it's really the past five years that I think that uh, the research in lipids related to synuclein and Parkinson's disease really exploded.